Hello and welcome to Halbon's Plush Videos. Today we are joined in by Stefan from Orion. So first of all, welcome to this chat, Stefan, and uh, tell us a bit about your DeFi journey. Hi, thank you. I mean, I've been in, in DeFi space for maybe five, six years. You know, it all started when I, you know, listening to Vitalik Buterin and his grand vision for smart contracts. Uh, from, like, I think that's the defining moment, you know, about six years ago when I started really getting interested in, in uh, the space. I come from a technical background, but not software development. So uh, I've always been interested by finance and and software too, just uh, never pursued this. So I've been learning a lot over the last few years and then uh, started investing as well. And eventually I found Orion, which um, caught my interest. I thought it was, was a very interesting and smart project, trying different things and in ways that made sense to me. And so, yeah, I started uh, just, I was a community member and started uh, learning about it, supporting it, then eventually grew closer to the team, had questions for them and basically started nurturing a relationship with them to the point where, uh, yeah, and right now I'm um, the Orion DAO ambassador. We have, a, I mean, we have a few. So um, I represent Orion. I'm not the team itself, but I represent Orion, basically connecting Orion with uh, different platforms, going to different events in person and being a brand ambassador for Orion. Fantastic. I love how connected and fast this whole DeFi ecosystem moved. You started as a community member and now you're an ambassador. All right, so let's get into it. What is Orion? What's the mission? Uh, what are you guys building? What's it all about? Yeah, so Orion is a suite of Web3 products, basically tailored to, uh, we're trying to make Web3 products very simple and good for the users. So. What it does is it offers instant access to aggregated liquidity from centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges across multiple blockchains. So providing users with uh, real-time prices, like best prices on the market from their own wallet. So this is very different than any other platform really that you see out there. When you go on Uniswap, you, ha you have access to their liquidity. Um, when you go on one inch, you have access to their liquidity and different DEXs liquidity, but you don't really access the big, like the world's biggest sources of liquidity are centralized exchanges. So Binance, KuCoin, OKX. And what Orion does is it decentralizes this centralized liquidity, which is way more optimal, like way faster, better, provides better prices for users, but without, like, you know, requiring users to, to create an account on these, without uh, trusting these uh, big centralized entities with their own assets. So it's basically the best of both worlds. You have um, the best prices coming from those exchanges like Binance, KuCoin, OKX, but from your own wallet. So you control everything. It's all through decentralized uh, smart contracts. Um, so yeah, we're very different from uh, Uniswap and uh, OneInch and, and you know those types of DEXs while still providing the same benefits. Okay, so in addition to more control through your own wallets and probably the best prices out there, is there anything else that you would add to this mix that separates Orion from every other DEX out there? Yeah, so a lot, a lot of uh, exchanges now, are, you know, are all competing for best prices and easier. Like we're we're focused on you know UI UX, making things as simple as possible for users, but also lowering our fees and sharing more of those fees with users. So this is completely different than uh, what's happening in the space. You see, like Uniswap just increasing their fees now because they have to like they, they need to to be able to create a revenue the the beauty behind our products is that we don't need to to pay for liquidity we don't need to incentivize liquidity providers because we tap into the the best sources of liquidity centralized exchanges so for us the co costs are very very low so we were able to offer like like cur currently we offer like zero percent fees if a trade is routed via uniswap or other dexes we offer like very like lower fees than Uniswap if the trades are performed on centralized exchanges. So usually the best price will be on Binance or KuCoin or OKX. So we provide that price. And even if we add our little fee of 0.25%, it's still cheaper than trading on Uniswap. So this is, uh, you know, we offer lower fees, better prices, and we want to share more of these fees back to users. So we have a referral program that is coming up, something completely different that hasn't been done in the space, you know, up to five levels of, of referrals. Uh, it's been designed to be sustainable uh, from fees. And, and basically, like we're sharing up to 40% of trading fees back to users. We're not, we're not you know, it's completely different from centralized exchanges who you know, are these massive entities. It's completely different from DEXs like Uniswap who are increasing their fees and not actually sharing them with users of Uniswap. They, you know, they, they take the fees to 
to reward the liquidity providers, but, but users using Uniswap don't really receive any of the value that they're creating by using these products. So this is our focus here. We have best prices. We want to have like a simple approach for users. We have the mobile app that's coming that they'll make it even easier for users to trade from their own wallet without having to create an account on you know, all these different exchanges and lower fees and sharing those fees back to the community. Yeah, I love that aspect about sharing, uh, you know, like sharing the value with the community back. That goes a long way usually. Um, all right. So we are talking uh, about uh, collaborative security work together. So let's talk security. What has been your security strategy generally with Orion thus far? As you all know, we've pivoted a bit. Um, we've had uh, like a minor exploit uh, last year, uh, like a, almost a year ago. So basically what happened is... Uh, Know, some minor exploit in one of our smart contracts with one of our experimental brokers. All this to say we had some security protocols in the sense that like internal things are always being checked by different teams, different members, code is being checked. And we had audits as well with uh, like another auditor. Uh, basically, we've switched now to Halborn. We believe uh, it's a good choice so far, like everything is going well. So there's, there's a few things that, you, you know, so we have our own internal review of this. Like I think all, most projects should have, hopefully. Um, but this is like very the, the base thing for us. Like we have, a, you know, Orion has their own brokers like, with their liquidity uh, being used for this whole thing to happen. So like Orion is the first one to be incentivized to have the top security. Otherwise, uh, you know, it, it's to our best advantage. So the first step is to have strong internal co uh, code review and controls, um, but also in, in audits, which we're doing with Halborn, but also by design, this is what's very different from other projects or other platforms. By design, Orion has been made to be safe in the sense that, uh, you know, when users are trading versus, well, first of all, it's not centralized. So compared to centralized exchanges, users don't need to trust a uh, central, don't need to deposit their funds into like a closed box environment, like a bank. They they hold their wallet. So, you know, we, we understand this, but when users now are, tra are trading on Orion, basically, they're trading against uh, with atomic swaps. So they're, which is basically a technology ensuring that you're not going to submit your assets before receiving the asset that you want to keep it very simple. Uh, same for a bridge, cross-chain bridge. Like we'll, we've seen like so many bridges being exploited uh, by design. Orion is TVL light. So this means that uh, we don't need to, we don't like our bridge doesn't mint tokens, doesn't wrap tokens, doesn't store like large amounts of tokens to mint them on another chain. It works peer to peer. So as soon as, you know, if, if someone, basically the the peer would be the liquidity node or like a broker if that um broker has the the token that you want across cross chain it's done instantaneously with a swap um, atomic swaps so the user is guaranteed to receive their token as soon as you know the, the broker releases the token on the other side uh you know we're we're explaining this in our git book and, and all that but basically by design we, we don't want to have a lot of funds on our protocol um because it, it is it becomes a target for for exploits and um yeah even for uh, on the trading side of things we don't need we don't need like i said before we don't need large liquidity pools because we tap into the largest sources of liquidity so we're not attracting a lot of liquidity to be stored for long periods of time on our protocol this is completely different than uniswap completely different than centralized i mean than uh, other bridges uh so by design all we need is like enough liquidity which we call transient TVL um, to to make the trading happen and facilitate the trading. So if like there's like five million dollars worth of uh, um, trading happening on a specific day, it doesn't mean that we need five million dollars of liquidity locked up. It basically means like whatever like the trades like direction are going mostly, like we just need like enough. So we're very capital efficient, meaning like maybe we need like for example one million dollars on our protocol for these $5 million to, to occur. Um, it's basically more capital efficient than liquidity pools because we don't need to store liquidity. And uh, yeah, that so by design, this makes it less attractive to to uh, hackers. Got it. So uh, TVL light by design, I thought that phrase was pretty great at explaining uh, how you have strategized this around capital efficiency overall. Um, so that's great to hear. And of course, in addition, you have uh, external security partnerships such as Halborn. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. Um, what were your criteria behind selecting Halborn as your security partner? And how has the experience been thus far? 
I wasn't personally the, the one responsible for selecting Holborn, but my understanding from speaking with the team is that really they they wanted a leader in the space, someone that has a great reputation. Not only that, because we, we've dealt with other auditors with great reputation, but basically someone that could be trusted and very fast in updates and basically learning from our previous mistakes, as well as someone that was uh, referred by partners. So I believe they've discussed with a lot of different partner projects and to come up with trusting Hobborn. And so far, my understanding is, uh, is that it's been going very well and uh, we're very happy about it. That was really insightful. Uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up this Flash video for today. Thank you so much again, Stefan, for joining us in, and have a good one ahead. Thank you very much for having me.